More roster changes have been announced, and it's an unfortunate one for the MEA scene. And honestly, I understand why a lot of the players and fans are coming out to say, like, how can we expect to get behind an organization, a team, if they're making roster changes so quick? Nobody's committing to each other like they used to back in the day that would, you know, they'd go through the good times together. They'd go through the hard times together. And now, as soon as things don't go according to plan, they just switch it up. And uh, you really hate to see that. I would like to see some teams go through the grueler for a bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Let's talk about some of these roster updates and also some of the drama coming after the games last night for Pro League. So if you haven't seen the news already and follow me over on Twitter, Aurora have parted ways with Hardecki. Now, of course, this was coming to a shock to many because Aurora finished in first in breaking records for Pro League last split. You would think that they would not only probably qual, but at least do pretty good. Well, no, they've not been doing good at all. And it's been an unfortunate situation. However, I did not expect them to make roster changes already. So Ardeki comes out to say, I want to give you a huge thanks to Aurora and all the staff. It was a pleasure working together. Love and kisses and hugs to everyone. Aurora officially said, you know, hard times force us to make difficult decisions. Well, who made that difficult decision? Did he part ways? Did he leave? No, he actually, you know, somewhat might as well just say what it is. He kind of got dropped. So, so Orena came out to say, to clarify the news you heard today, the decision was made by the team, but perhaps I'm the one who initiated it everything else is private not public and i want to thank our for the tournaments and the result that we achieved together and i wish him good luck in the future of his career so a lot of you were in the comments here like you know like why 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 like this just isn't it but uh i guess at the end of the day when you're not getting the results you need of course sometimes it puts pressure on people to make these hard decisions also you got to make mention of the games itself but before we do there was some drama going on in these games so uh, you had an MVP award go out, and it went to Duplex. Well, Hal was not very excited about this news, so he comes on the MVP post. I think this is crazy. If it's one thing to have an opinion, go on stream and talk about it, but the comment on the post that is meant to bring light to Duplex and kind of like steal the light, it's crazy, but I do think he brings up a valid point. All questions marks, like, what's going on? What kind of MVP award is this? Well, he had a response saying, bro, it ain't all about you, and not just that they won overall today as well. So you have MVP. MVP many times and let others have it for once it's not that big of a deal right well Hal goes on to say you give it to the actual MVP it's a really simple concept since the basis is clearly on stats it's disrespectful not just for me in this instant but for anyone else that it's happened to I do not care to make crap up about me but I care about giving credit when credit is due I got screwed over for MVP the other week when we won too and I had the best stats so you know he had the response again well who won in points today are you just salty that they took it like what are you on about how he was the mvp of the team who won today like lay off the salt your sodium levels must be insane talk about conceded so the idea was you're an idiot and then someone had you know a, a pretty good point to share this was uh from beza from kcp saying that nasky got the mvp for this day so it's not always about the team who's winning because if you take a look at these stats you know nasky not only didn't win alliance was the team who won but he also had the least amount of damage uh you know or a lesser amount of damage than effect right when 9k damage 16 kills the guy was popping off alliance wins the day and yo gets the most damage player on their team and, uh, you know, Unlucky also gets, like, the most kills. So you would think that some of these guys, one of these guys is going to get the MVP. Not the case. Somehow Nasky got this. So I, I get the idea of shining light on other players. I don't think that their logic is always consistent with who gets MVP. Now, you did have one of the casters come out to say, Dia, that, uh, you know, hey, I'll take responsibility for this. This was my call, and here's how I did it. I think the logic is fair. A player who's definitely deserving of an MVP award doesn't always get it. A lot of times it does go to the team that wins. So, like, like, uh, you know, that's why like college football, you have the Heisman Trophy, right? It tries to highlight a player, even if their team specifically is not doing great, they individually are doing amazing. And so that's kind of where you'll see the Heisman go. But when it comes to like MVP stuff, yeah, it just often doesn't, you could go lights out, but if you lose the championship, they're giving it the MVP to a player who was probably the best on the winning team. So I get it. Uh, it's just that that logic doesn't always seem to happen because like the nasty situation we just talked about. So Dia steps in and said, I'm actually going to step in here because I made this call. Statistically speaking, there's no question you're the best player in the lobby. This nomination should not take away from that. 
you were in the running for MVP because your stats were the best in the lobby and you played very well. Dupe got the MVP because his team won. And even if he didn't top the leaderboard statistically, he was a large part of responsibility for a huge performance from the 30th place team. And his stats were the best of his teams. I approached today's MVP from how big of a difference they made on their own team. If Dupe hadn't shown up mechanically and mentally for Yup today, I don't think they even break top 10. I wanted to highlight a player that made a huge difference to their squad and whose performance today has made a huge impact on their standing in the league. That's just my take on it. And I'm open to thinking differently about it. Again, this is not meant to take away from you. You did play fantastically. So, you know, once again, perfect logic. I get it. It's just that when you compare it to other MVP awards, they don't always use that same logic. So how are you really going about it? Uh, interested to see what your thoughts are down below. Also, we've got to make mention of another North American change. So Cobra from CCE basically came out to say that today was going to be his last day in Pro League Split 2. That was yesterday, of course, before they actually played their game. I'm not getting dropped or anything like that. I just can't play for the rest of the split. To make it clear, this is actually an interesting... I've never seen this happen before. Three years ago, I wasn't playing Apex seriously yet and wasn't thinking about making it to Pro League. And so three years ago, four of my friends started putting $20 a week in a shared account so that we could save up for a trip of our lives. Two weeks of a road trip in the US and one week in Cuba. I sadly couldn't cancel the trip and had to make a tough decision to miss match day six and regional finals as well. Nothing but love for the boys for picking me up since PLQ4 and sticking with my strong French accent. I don't know. I still don't know who they will pick up as a sub, but we are not done yet and confident that they'll play to the top of their performance in the upcoming weeks. Interested to see how it all goes down, but uh, a nice, you know, real life commitment. I guess you got to respect it at the end of the day. Also had to make mention of the pro league results. So let's talk about all this. We've talked about the drama. We've talked about what's going on. Well, what actually happened and how are things standing now that we got to change? So firstly, you should know by now that Yup won in North America. This was group A versus group B. Yup got first place. This was a big one. They won by one point. This was, uh, you know, Sivian, Duplex and Prodigy Aces. Then you have TSM in second place. Obviously, TSM proving their consistency once again. Team Falcons in third place. You actually had some clips here where TSM were like, you know, 3 v 3 Falcons and, you know, faring off pretty well. I think they won a couple of those as well. So, yeah, Team Falcons in third. No surprise there. Board in fourth. You had Bleed Esports in fifth. And honestly, I think they could have even had a better day. Like, kind of look at these stats and you're, you're not seeing the craziest numbers. Like, the fact that they were able to get fifth and only like 9 or 11 points away from striking distance of first one of their games just slightly better they probably win the day as well uh, also ssg in sixth you got ngnl in seventh not moist in eighth it was not like a detrimental day but it most certainly needed to be better fluffy aimers in ninth elevate in tenth once again not necessarily uh, the best of hopes they probably wanted a little bit better weave in 11th complexity pioneers empire cce 15th lg in 16th ec in 17th the most hated nrg and Oxygen Esports. Oxygen also needed a much better day. So if we take a look at the overall North American stats and where we stand right now and how many games are left, we've got two more Pro League days left over here on the right. You've got July the 6th and you've got July the 7th. And then you'll have regional finals as well. But right now, as it stands with the top 12 going to land for split twos, Team Falcons, it's LG, it's TSM, it's SSG, Bleed Esports, Liquid Alienware, Complexity, NRG, Furia, Pioneers, Weave, and NGNL. Don't forget, some of these teams are only on four matches played. So, uh, you know, when you look at that, it kind of makes sense that Oblivion more than likely will break into this top 12. As it stands right now, NGNL is in a top 12, but they are on game five. Fury, on the other hand, game four. So will probably shoot up around the fifth or sixth spot. Then you've got Oblivion. We've got Cloud9. Both on those four games, they just barely need a, a slightly decent game in order to get into that top 12 again. Then Oxygen Esports kind of fell down quite a bit. Elevate, honestly, is looking at striking distance. Like, I'm actually kind of happy to see this. But Not Moist and Elevate, both of them, uh, while they are on game five, and yes, they are slightly behind, I don't think it's going to be the end of the road for them. Like, if they can just get, like, a win. Like, you know, we've seen Not Moist do pretty good in scrims. They've won multiple days. If they can get one of those wins, I think, honestly, they may set themselves up for land. So we'll see if E8 or Not Moist could do that. Perhaps, possibly both, if they both have a fair share of good games. So, yup, in 21st. Now, they just won the day. It's crazy to see because they went from like dead last all the way up here. 
Now, this officially puts Disguised in dead last, which is just sad to see. Of course, yesterday we talked about Enemy is going to be parting ways with uh, Disguised or Design, I guess, to be more specific, at the end of Champ. So we'll see how all these roster changes shake things up in the end. Also, it's just kind of hard. Like, how do you even recover knowing that your teammate is going to be leaving? He's already verbally committed to leaving you. Uh, so, like, how do you even bring it back together for Champs? You know what I mean? Like, if the idea is we're going to win, because I can't imagine a world where if you do win Champs that you still leave. So, you're kind of like setting the precedent early that, you know, things are not going to work out, but, you know, it is what it is. Also, the EMEA scene had their group of games as well. And so, Group A versus Group B, you can see FaZe Clan got first with a nice 60 points, Blacklist International in second, Gaming Gladiators in third, Passion UA in fourth, Aurora did have a slightly better day. Now, who were they playing with? It was W Rugby. Rugby. I didn't even know the guy. I heard of his name like once before. So uh, very excited to see some EMEA roster swaps and roster changes. And it looks like it's faring pretty well. Aurora was definitely not playing this good in times past. Trojan in sixth, Atlas in seventh, Navi in eighth, Danish in ninth, Nessie, full English, go next. 3D Max, players, Apex Warlords, Cybercats, Vex, Forbidden. Once again, despite making the roster change with zero nothing, they're still having a hard time at the bottom. So I know Plexus is kind of feeling good about that. Eternal in 19th, and once again, Passion is still not playing considering there is no more Passion and no more roster for them as well. The overall scoreboard or overall standings for the NBA scene, once again, they're in a similar situation as North America. They've got two days left. One going to be in the early stages of July, and that's going to be July the 6th and then July the 7th. Once again, that's group A and C and then group B and C. So top eight for those guys and going to land right now. FaZe Clan, Gaming Gladiators, Passion UA, Alliance in fourth place with only four games. So more than likely possible to jump up to first after all this is over. Danish in fifth, Navi in sixth, Gonex in seventh, Trojan in eighth, Atlas, Blacklist International are slightly on the outside looking in. NIP believe it or not, are, you know, 11th place right now. Also looking in now, don't worry about Nasky. I kind of think that he should get back into this. They are on four games, so they're only one game behind. More than likely, they'll get more than enough points to get into that top eight. I do think Nasky and co will probably make land. Aurora, on the other hand, they've bounced back slightly now in 12th place. That's great, but they are on game five, so they're going to need another banger of a day as well. So Vex in 13th, Cybercats in 14th. And just remember this as well. If they have five games right now, just know they only have one more Pro League match day. The guys with four have two more Pro League match days. So is, there's a lot more wiggle room for those guys, I guess. So those that one more day that you have for Aurora, you have to go big because you need to compensate for the extra game that your competitors are going to have behind you. So we'll see how it all goes. I think it's crazy that Passion has only played three games and they're still 17th. And uh, I think they're going to outplace a lot of these teams that are going to play all six games. So unfortunate for many of these teams, just not having the performance that they need. APAC South, by the way, is now officially over, not just with their game uh, you know, last night, but their entire Pro League season is finally over. So now they're going to go into regional finals. So to finish off their day, it was SWQ in first, Dreamfire in second, Weibo and Guild in the top four, final dream in fifth true Virtus pro had a better day but it's just not going to be enough seventh place overall vkg in eighth uh predator in ninth no credit in tenth and overall pretty similar standings as always nothing crazy going on no so now you go into the apac south overall standings you can see legends gaming will be your champions in first place mkers will be in second uh vkg in third swq in fourth x and y in fifth guild in six dream fire in seventh now before you go crazy and think oh my gosh these are the seven teams going to land not the case yet you still got regional finals where these top 20 teams and geek esports barely getting in and obviously that's a big team that we all know uh you know so virtus pro is going to miss out on on this unfortunately i hate to see that because those guys uh just played so well at land last time i feel like but the overall teams going into this not sure if they've officially updated them but basically going to be the top 20 so you have a full lobby so interested to see how those regional final games go because that's going to determine a lot of this bottom half here will dream fire do good enough to stay in or will they be pushed out by a team like mdy or maybe even vegas or or maybe bear claw bear claw was literally up in the seventh place position yesterday maybe they grab it back so interested to see how it all falls into place also wanted to make mention of this statistic that was causing a lot of uh i guess outbreak in the community of people going against the controller and mouse and keyboard conversation again so i'm going to be talking about this more in depth over on my main channel if you guys want to go check it out later on this evening but the apex legends accuracy from top ten thousand 
Apex players from playtime of February this year to current date in June. So for the last four months, basically, here's the inputs that the top 10,000 players have been using, and here are the statistics. So the average accuracy by input for controller, it's 33.57% not surprising considering they have aim assist mouse and keyboard 25.72 percent not surprising that controller is outperforming mouse and keyboard uh because of the fact that they have aim assist like and, and i'm not trying to be you know be one of those that just sit here and complain i've obviously played both quite a bit i played on mouse and keyboard for apex for about two and a half years then i switched the controller for about three years off and on but i was playing a lot less then i just recently went back about two weeks ago to mouse and keyboard and uh, i feel smarter on mouse and keyboard i feel better on mouse and keyboard it definitely feels a lot more fluent controller is so much easier though i was playing 1v1s and like literally losing so much with this guy uh, up close on controller and i didn't even tell him i was like i'm just gonna prove my point didn't say a word just picked up the controller and boom just one clipped him no problem beat him in the 1v1 like, it's just so easy i think less i just it, you go into autopilot much easier on controller so i love both i understand they both have their challenges i hate playing on controller personally because of the clunkiness i get roller brain really really bad so i actually think that like to a degree mouse and keyboard is better overall just for me that's just how i feel because uh you know i just feel like i'm a better player overall but the aiming stuff yeah i get it so controller players average accuracy is 30.5 percent higher according to this statistic one fourth of roller players have higher accuracy than 99.93 of mouse and keyboard players the top three controller accuracy uh, Xander 51.10% overall accuracy ranked number one number two guy was Koifel with 47.71 no surprise there that guy's crazy and then winter G I don't even know this guy but 47.02% now the top three M and K players accuracy was 38.9 37.7 36.7 so you know these guys are not even in the top 100 not even the top 200 not even the top 300 overall so it's just all controller players for a good bit average kd by input also you have a much higher kd for controller players than you do mouse and keyboard it sparks the conversation people are all in the comments like, i don't see a problem this is not you know this is not very compelling or this is misleading and everybody goes on their own story so i'm interested to see what your guys take on it as well also just kind of had to make mention of this nice week i posted that he was doing a live watch party from the 100 Thieves compound. And I really hope and pray that at one point, 100 Thieves will enter back into the Apex scene. Let me know what your thoughts are in all the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with all things inside the world of Apex Legends Esports. And until the next time, we'll see you all. Later, Gators.